These are the mountains of East Central Idaho, about 10 miles southwest of the town of Chalice. We're looking down here at Malm Gulch. Uh, and this is going to be probably a two-part video series. The second part is going to showcase some of these volcanic rocks. And the real highlight here is the uh, petrified sequoia stumps that I'll show in part two. But I wanted to focus this first video uh, on a really remarkable uh, relationship between some rocks up here just behind me. And I'll show you the rocks here in a second, but I think I want to start with a, a good regional overview here. Um, everything behind me is what's known as the Chalice Volcanics. The Chalice Volcanics is a, a thick blanket of all sorts of volcanic rocks that uh, cover much of central and eastern Idaho. Uh, it's a really common rock that we see in the area. It's very widespread. And I'm not going to get into the tectonic setting as much, but suffice it to say, um, the Chalice Volcanics are a set of rocks that were deposited or laid down during a period of extension. So east-west extension, but not the basin and range extension, uh, produced magmas of various compositions that formed volcanic eruptions in this region. Um, and I want to first start with a, a little bit of a diagram that I hope shows some of the variety here. And so what I've got here is a cartoon, uh, a pretty intricate cartoon, kind of a cross section from west to east. And what I want to show here is some of the variety of vol volcanoes that formed in the Chalice Volcanic. First of all, to our west, we have the granites of the Idaho Batholis. So the granites you see over um, north of Boise, and that make up much of the core, the wilderness of the central part of the state. Those are all these Cretaceous age granites, maybe uh, anywhere from 100 to uh, 80 or so million years ago. As you move eastward, uh, you leave the Idaho Batholith and you run into older Paleozoic sedimentary rocks that are uh, folded and faulted by the severe orogeny, and I'm going to show you some of those here in a second. But the main thing we want to look at here is the Chalice Volcanics. The Chalice Volcanics cover these rocks, and there was already a topographic surface here. So there was already uh, hills and valleys, that sort of thing. Um, and the first thing that happened as the Chalice Volcanic episode began was the deposition of a really thick conglomerate. So you can see all these pebbles in here on top of this surface. And so what this is creating is a unconformity because we're covering the existing rocks, in this case, these Paleozoic sedimentary rocks, with another sedimentary unit over uh, some period of erosion. So we've got this erosional surface on which we're depositing these, these gravels. So these there were mountains here shedding off these big uh, gravels and cobbles into the valleys. Uh, ultimately, though, we had volcanic activity uh, start to really fire up in this region and produce several different types of volcanoes, including the classic sort of stratovolcano. So we had stratovolcanoes here. Of course, the volcanic edifice itself has long since eroded away, but we still have the deposits of ash and lava. There's uh, thick andesitic lavas. There's uh, a little bit of basalts in places, dacites, rhyolites, all sorts of different volcanoes here. Uh, lava domes, which are these thick uh, piles of uh, pasty lava that just kind of wells up onto the surface and forms a steep-sided uh, material. These uh, stratovolcanoes occasionally would have big eruptions of ash and that ash would fall and settle down on the landscape and form uh, layers of tuff. So tuff is the bed of ash that we get when we have a really explosive eruption. And then sometimes there were intrusions of lava as well, what we sometimes call, um, these are sometimes, if they're shallow, like a lot of these are, we call them hip abyssal intrusions. And so a really complicated layer of the Chalice Volcanics uh, from the Eocene about 51 to 45 million years ago. And so this is sort of the, the landscape here. And what I'm gonna show you here where I'm standing is basically a point about like this. So I, I've got my feet on these older Paleozoic rocks, and then I've got this conglomerate right above me. And so let me show you these in a little bit better detail. Uh, these sort of brown, platey limestones, the footing here is really lousy. Um, but you can actually see some of the beds here of this platey limestone. So it's actually dipping to the northwest. Uh, there's a little bit more of it in outcrop over there, and I'm gonna wander up a little bit as best as the footing will allow. So across the way, you can see again more of these tan, platy limestones down into 
the gully and down by the road there. And then we have this really sharp contact here and these massive conglomerates with these huge boulders in them. In fact, I think we can see the actual unconformity contact. Oh, this is great. This is fantastic right here. So here's this gray limestone from the Silurian period. This limestone is 430 million years old. It was laid down on the bottom of the ocean. Um, and right above it are these conglomerates with these big cobbles in them. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> that are about 50 million years old. So we've got an unconformity here of about 380 million years. And this is the erosional surface right here that my finger's kind of tracing. Um, we can see a lot of these particles, these cobbles, are enormous. Uh, some are a meter or so in diameter. Most of these are quartzites. This is a beautiful quartzite right here, which makes a lot of sense because if you drive along this part of the Salmon River, around the East Fork of the Salmon River, you'll see big outcrops of these older Paleozoic rocks. And the most resistant ones, the ones that stand out and make the biggest cliffs, are the quartzites. Quartzites are sandstones that have been highly compressed, maybe slightly metamorphosed, uh, and they end up being really hard and durable. So this, this cobble of quartzite as it's being tumbled down a river valley is banging into the other rocks, chipping away uh, the, the corners of those rocks, smashing and obliterating the softer rocks. But these turn out to be really, really hard. So most of these are quartzites. You don't see a lot of volcanics in the lower part of this. This is sometimes called the Smiley Creek conglomerate. Um, but in places I've read that when you work your way up through the conglomerate, you start to see some of the, the volcanic material as the Chalice Volcanic episode kind of gets fired up. Uh, so again, these are just these really fast moving streams, highly energetic streams with lots of energy, enough energy and velocity to move these large particles. And so this surface here, this unconformity would technically be an angular unconformity because we have these limestones um, oriented at an angle to the conglomerates. And so there's an angular relationship between these older sedimentary rocks below and these younger, more or less horizontally bedded, although it doesn't show a lot of bedding here, sedimentary rocks above. Uh, pretty cool. My, two of my more recent videos looked at two other types of unconformities down in Utah, uh, a nonconformity, the great unconformity, and a buttress unconformity in Ogden Canyon. So here we have a third type of unconformity, an angular unconformity where sedimentary rocks get deposited, then get tilted or rotated, so they're no longer horizontal, then some extensive period of erosion, and then other younger rocks getting deposited on top. We can see the same thing across the gully here with, this is all the Silurian limestone, uh, and then there's the conglomerate up there. And so the, the, the contact here kind of winds its way up the hill um, and, and works its way up that way. So really awesome. Please watch uh, part two of my quick little video here on, I'm gonna walk up to Mom Gulch and show you the, the petrified tree trunks there, the stumps. This is the Mom Gulch area, about 10 miles southwest of Chalice in the East Central Mountains of Idaho. Um, this is part two of a two-part series on Mom Gulch. In part one, I focused on some of the rocks down near the trailhead. There's uh, some folded um, Silurian rocks and then a beautiful angular unconformity and then these huge kind of gravel and cobble conglomerate sitting above them. That's the base of the Chalice Volcanics. I also spent some time in, in the part one of the video talking about the regional deposition of the Chalice Volcanics. So definitely watch that if you want a better overview of how complicated and varied the Chalice Volcanics are. But these are Eocene rocks from about 45 to 51 million years ago. We can see here they've got some layering in them and they mostly consist of in this area where i'm at here it's a lot of uh tough so tough is actually a rock composed primarily of ash so the the explosive particles that get uh blown out of uh explosive volcanoes and then fall to the ground a lot of this is ash fall tough there are some down in the gully back a little ways there's were some uh, larger particles in there and what I would interpret as lahar deposits. So these mud flows, these slurries coming off the flanks of volcanoes that mix mud 
and boulders and debris, including plant any plant remains or logs that are around, can get entrained in that as well. Um, this is kind of a, a nice little stop here. Um, there's actually a piece of uh, charcoal in the ash right here. So this is a, a piece of wood uh, that's that's been possibly burned a little bit, uh, maybe during the eruption, maybe there was a wildfire, something like that. And then the other thing I saw just as I was getting started here is a really beautiful uh, fault surface. So if you look in here, there's this white material, which could be either quartz or calcite, but then you can see the sort of fibrous nature of this. You can see the lines going this way. And what those are, are those are called slick insides or slick in lines. So this surface is a fault, probably a small fault uh, in the chalice volcanics. And these lines indicate which way the fault moved during uh, one of the last little movements on this thing. So you can see the, the direction of movement, kind of neat. But the main thing we want to look at here uh, is just over here. So when this chalice volcanic episode occurred in the Eocene, the climate in Idaho is very different. So rather than this dry, you know, sagebrush, although we have some nice flowers going on here, landscape we see today, this part of Idaho was much wetter, much more temperate, uh, and it supported a very lush ecosystem, including uh, large sequoia trees. Now, sequoias are a genus of tree uh, that include the famous redwoods of California. So they're absolutely enormous trees. They're among the oldest living trees on the planet. I think some have lived to be oh, about two to 3,000 years old. And they're also some of the largest trees on the planet uh, in excess of 300 feet tall in places. And what we have here in Malm Gulch in the Chalice Volcanics are stumps of these sequoia trees. So this is petrified wood. This is fossilized wood. Uh, these are oriented vertically, which indicates that the, these were the, the bases of the tree or probably near the bottom, but they're still uh, in situ. I'll show you some bigger ones around the way, but these ones are nice. Uh, and we can see some of the, the fantastic textural features in this fossilized wood. And the way that fossilized wood or petrified wood forms is we get, uh, obviously we have a tree or possibly a log. So the tree could be living or dead, doesn't really matter. But then one common way that we get these, especially here in the Chalice Volcanics, is we had these big explosive eruptions, ash burying the tree or possibly the tree being surrounded by lahars and basically the tree being killed. But then what we get is the tree's completely buried, so it's isolated from the elements. Uh, it's isolated from oxygen for the most part, which might cause it to decay at the surface. And what happens is, is the silica in the ash starts uh, moving, the groundwater picks up the silica and the ash, moves it downward into the wood and replaces the organic material in the wood with mineral material, in this case, silica or quartz. And in a very, what we think is a slow, but we're not sure, process, cell by cell, it replaces it with mineral material and becomes fossilized wood or what a lot of people call petrified wood. You can actually see the, the contact here between the woody material and over here, hopefully you can see some of the class in here. So this one might be a, a lahar deposit because it's got larger particles. It doesn't look as much like an ash, although it could be maybe a, a tough breccia or something like that. But anyway, we have the volcanic material here, the edge of the tree, uh, then the interior of the tree and the woody material. Another one right here. Um, and then obviously these don't stick up too high. Some of the larger ones, um, the BLM, who is the land manager here, has uh, enclosed in fencing. So you can see there's one at the top of the hill up here. There's this one here, and then just beyond it, there's another one. Um, I think I saw one back behind me there, but we can walk over to this one here and look at this really impressive uh, stump from a sequoia from 50 or so million years ago. And this thing's, wow, this thing's huge. Um, I would guess that that thing is maybe eight or nine feet in diameter. Uh, and if you measured the circumference around it, it's probably closer to 20 or 25 feet. So really quite large. And so these, these fences have been in place to protect them. Uh, if you do come here and visit, uh, please try to just enjoy the, 
the sites but not collect any of the wood obviously if everyone's coming up here and picking up wood or chipping away at these stumps with a hammer uh, there won't be much left after a few years so fabulous geology here the eocene we can look over the fence here and get a better bird's eye view of how big this stump is yeah that's more than my arm span across that's probably at least eight feet in diameter um, again one just over this ridge here with some fencing there's another one right there sticking up and i believe um and this is all in my book i have a book geology underfoot in southern idaho and i have a whole chapter on mom gulch and if i remember right uh some geologists have looked at this hillside and found because these sequoias sit at different elevations and they're in in different beds of tuff or volcanic material uh, and so what that suggests is that they represent different phases of forest growth. So you had some sequoias living here, an eruption uh, killing those trees, but preserving uh, the roots of some of them or the trunks of some of them. Then an, And then they get covered and then there's another eruption. I think there's like six or seven, something like that, uh, successive forests in here. So it shows us that the forest had time to recover and regrow between these uh, explosive uh, and eruptive phases. So part of the, the beautiful scenery here in Malm Gulch, uh, really just a cool, a cool little canyon, a nice little hike, uh, some really interesting geology, and all part of the Chalice Volcanics from about 50 million years ago.